This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Deontay Wilder first won the WBC Heavyweight World Championship on January 17th, 2015, when he scored a lopsided unanimous decision victory against Berman Stavern. In his first title defense on June 13th, 2015, Wilder defeated Eric Molina by ninth round knockout. In his second title defense on September 26th, 2015, Wilder defeated Johan Duhaupis by 11th round stoppage. In his third title defense on January 16th, 2016, Wilder defeated Arthur Spilka by ninth round knockout. In his fourth title defense on July 16th, 2016, Wilder defeated Chris Ariola by eighth round stoppage. In his fifth title defense on February 25th, 2017, Wilder scored a fifth round stoppage against Gerald Washington. In his sixth title defense on November 4th, 2017, Wilder scored a devastating first round knockout in his rematch with Stavern. In his seventh title defense on March 3rd, 2018, Wilder stopped undefeated challenger Luis Ortiz by 10th round stoppage. In his eighth title defense on December 1st, 2018, Wilder retained his title in a 12 round draw against lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. In his ninth title defense on May 18th of this year, Wilder scored a first round knockout against Dominic Brazil. And in his 10th and most recent title defense this past Saturday night, November 23rd, 2019, in a bout that was televised on Fox Pay-Per-View, Wilder scored a brutal seventh round knockout in his rematch against Luis Ortiz. Wilder has become just the sixth boxer during the long, rich history of heavyweight boxing to make 10 consecutive heavyweight title defenses. The others include Muhammad Ali, who had 10 consecutive defenses during his second reign as heavyweight champion, Tommy Burns, who had 11 consecutive title defenses, Vladimir Klitschko, who had 18 consecutive title defenses, Larry Holmes, who had 20 consecutive defenses, and the great Joe Lewis, who had 25 consecutive defenses. Technically speaking, you can make the case that Holmes had 19 instead of 20, and that Lewis had 26 instead of 25, but 20 for Holmes and 25 for Lewis were the generally accepted numbers I remember being most frequently cited. Regardless, Wilder now finds himself in a very exclusive group that carries profound historical significance. With 10 consecutive title defenses, Wilder has also just surpassed the likes of Vitaly Klitschko, Lennox Lewis, Iron Mike Tyson, Smokin' Joe Frazier, and Muhammad Ali from his first reign. A lot of Wilder's harshest critics and detractors are trying to downplay the historical significance of Wilder's 10 consecutive title defenses. And the main argument being used to downplay Wilder's achievement is based on the fact that we have more belts today than we did previously. Originally, there was just one heavyweight champion. Then situations arose where we could have two different heavyweight champions. In the early 1980s, we could have up to three different heavyweight champions. That started when Larry Holmes vacated the WBC in favor of the newly formed IBF. Following that, we had the situation where you could hypothetically have four heavyweight champions. And this came into play when Michael Spinks reigned as the lineal heavyweight champion, while technically not holding any major alphabet titles. And finally, when the WBO universally gained recognition as a fourth major alphabet belt, you could theoretically have up to five different heavyweight champions. That hasn't ever actually happened, but it's theoretically possible. Circling back to Wilder's loudest critics, that the achievement isn't historically significant because Wilder only holds one alphabet title, this argument still falls short when you consider the fact that we could have at least three different heavyweight champions dating back to the early 1980s, more than 35 years ago. 
So any way you view things, what Wilder accomplished is still historically unique. Since the early 80s, only two guys have more successful title defenses than Wilder, Larry Holmes and Vladimir Klitschko. If we do a quick comparison of Wilder's 10 consecutive defenses with the other heavyweight champions who have had 9 or more, the one common theme you will find is that most of the others had valid claims to the lineage. So the fact that what Wilder accomplished is historically significant is strongly tied in with the idea that the heavyweight lineage still commands great historical significance. Vitaly Klitschko had nine consecutive defenses of the very same WBC championship that Wilder now owns. Vitaly never unified, and he understandably never faced the best champion at this time, that being his younger brother Vladimir. So by any objective measure, Wilder's 10 WBC title defenses is greater than Vitaly's 9 WBC title defenses. Lennox Lewis had nine consecutive title defenses that started with the very same WBC belt. Eventually, Lewis earned a valid claim to the lineage when he stopped Shannon Briggs, and Lewis would ultimately unify the WBA IBF belts when he defeated Evander Holyfield. So by the end of this nine defense reign, Lewis had unified all three major belts from his day, as well as securing a valid claim to the lineage. Mike Tyson had nine consecutive title defenses, and once again, this started with the WBC. Tyson unified the WBA, and ultimately the IBF, and he ultimately earned a valid claim to the lineage when he defeated Michael Spinks. So like Lennox, by the end of Tyson's nine defense reign, Iron Mike had unified all three major belts from his day and also established a valid claim to the lineage. Smokin' Joe Frazier had nine consecutive title defenses, and his reign started as the NYSAC champion. This all happened towards the end of a transitional period where the two major belts that were previously the NBA and the NYSAC, those were essentially absorbed and replaced by the WBA and WBC titles as we know them today. Frazier ultimately unified the WBA-WBC versions by the end of this transition, and Frazier had also secured a valid claim to the lineage when he defeated Muhammad Ali in the fight of the century. So Frazier's situation is similar to what we have with Tyson and Lennox in terms of nine title defenses, in the sense that by the end of those nine defenses, Frazier held both major titles of that time and also had a valid claim to the lineage. Muhammad Ali had nine consecutive title defenses, and they were all undisputed defenses. There was no unification necessary, so of those with nine consecutive title defenses, Ali's first reign is the gold standard, Vitaly's reign is at the bottom, and the reigns of Tyson, Lewis, and Frazier, they all fall in between on basically equal footing. The important thing to take from this is that with the exception of Muhammad Ali, the championship reigns of Tyson, Lennox, and Frazier all started with a single major world championship. And by the end of these nine defense reigns, those three were undisputed with valid claims to the lineage. Right now, Wilder's 10 consecutive title defenses technically tie him with the second reign of Muhammad Ali. But Ali was undisputed with a valid claim to the lineage throughout that reign, so objectively speaking, Ali's reign definitely carries more weight here. The same can be said of Tommy Burns. All 11 of his consecutive title defenses happened when there was only one champion. So in the event Wilder gets to 11 consecutive title defenses, Tommy Burns objectively has a better claim. It's also worth noting that you can make the case Burns had 13 defenses, but two of those victories from the same night are generally accepted as exhibition bouts despite newspaper billings. Vladimir Klitschko had 18 consecutive defenses, and this reign began when Vladimir stopped Chris Bird for the IBF belt. Klitschko would ultimately unify the WBO and later the WBA, and he also secured a valid claim to the lineage. Vladimir never became undisputed during this reign, but he did unify all but one major world title of his day. 
Larry Holmes had 20 consecutive title defenses. The Easton Assassin started as the WBC champion, and he ultimately earned his claim to the lineage beyond reproach when he defeated Muhammad Ali. Holmes ultimately vacated the WBC when he was crowned champion by the newly formed IBF. So technically speaking, Holmes never unified any of the major titles of his day, but he did earn a legitimate claim to the lineage during that span. And of course, Joe Lewis is the gold standard here. Lewis had 25 consecutive title defenses back in the good old days when there was only one heavyweight world champion, exactly as it should be. Why am I going through all of this? Because I believe this bit of history does two important things. One, it highlights the importance of the lineal champion in the context of heavyweight history. And two, it also helps illustrate the magnitude of what Deontay Wilder just accomplished. In other words, for those critics who try and outright dismiss the historical significance of what it means for Deontay Wilder to make 10 consecutive title defenses, if this was so easy and so insignificant, then how come only two other heavyweight champions have ever accomplished this unique feat in the age of multiple splintered heavyweight world champions? Again, the only other two guys who have done it are Larry Holmes and Vladimir Klitschko. Deontay Wilder is now just the third heavyweight champion since the early 1980s to make 10 or more consecutive title defenses. The one thing that truly separates what Wilder has accomplished so far in comparison to both Vladimir and Holmes, aside from the raw number of consecutive title defenses, is the fact that Larry and Vlad both had valid claims to the lineage. Like Wilder, both Holmes and Vladimir started their reigns with just one major world title before earning lineal recognition. This is why the Lineal Heavyweight Championship is still historically significant. Fury detractors always try downplaying his status as Lineal Heavyweight Champion, but in this day and age where we have splintered alphabet soup, the lineage is the only way we can truly trace a path back to the days when there was just one heavyweight world champion. And in the heavyweight division, this is especially important because it's boxing's marquee division and heavyweights are less apt to switch divisions where things are much easier to trace. This is the main reason it is so important that Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury have a rematch to settle their unfinished business. For Deontay Wilder, if he can defeat Tyson Fury, he will have a valid claim to the lineage which will inherently amplify the magnitude of his historic feat of 10 or more consecutive title defenses. That alone will put him on solid grounding with both Larry Holmes and Vladimir Klitschko. At the end of the day, 10 consecutive title defenses is historically significant any way you choose to dissect it. Aside from Wilder, the fact that only Larry Holmes and Vladimir Klitschko have done this in modern times meaning since the early 80s. That alone shows you how difficult it is to reach this unique heavyweight championship milestone. It will be mighty interesting to see how many more title defenses Wilder can tally during this championship reign, and I for one cannot wait to see Wilder back in action. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.